Welcome everyone, and especially to our visitors, to this online gathering of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Bowling Green. I am Michelle Steiner, and I uh, welcome you on this glorious spring morning. We are a welcoming congregation. Whoever you are, however you identify, wherever you come from and whoever you love, you are welcome here. Our Sunday services are different each week so that we can honor and learn from a wide array of traditions and beliefs. Our speaker today is our very own beloved Roxanne Spencer. Though we each walk our own path here in this place and now at this time, we journey together as one community. For the worldwide community of Unitarian Universalists, the flaming chalice is a symbol of the light of learning, the fire of commitment, and the love within our congregations. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, bring to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, bring to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, bring to us beauty, vision, and joy. Our opening words are from Alice Dewar Miller. People love to talk but hate to listen. Listening is not merely not talking, though even that is beyond most of our powers. It means taking a vigorous human interest in what is being told to us. You can listen like a blank wall or like a splendid auditorium where every sound comes back richer and fuller. We will now have a few moments for meditation, reflection, and prayer. The singing bowl will lead us into silence. After the silence, we will sing Spirit of Life. You're welcome to sing along at home. As mentioned earlier, Unitarian Universalists have a wide array of beliefs 
and the speakers at our Sunday services come from many traditions. Here to share her own thoughts today is Roxanne Spencer. Roxanne is a librarian soon to be retiring from Western Kentucky University. She is currently an associate professor and coordinator of the Beulah Winchell Education Library, part of WKU Libraries. Roxanne is looking forward to the next chapter of her life with her dogs. Welcome to Women in Podcasts, Inexpert Experience from a Newbie. Here's a bit about podcasts, at least what I know about them so far. Podcasts are big. Podcasts are passe. What are podcasts again? Podcasts have had a few heydays in their relatively short history. Those who study the impact and development of podcasting often use 2014 as a current dividing line between the nascence of podcasts and when they really began to take off. Here's a rough podcasting timeline. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm very new to podcasts, and I find defining them and finding them a lot more confusing than I think they ought to be. So I decided in true librarian fashion to start researching them. Behold, the results of a true newbie to podcasts. Does a podcast come through a website? Does a podcast need a website? Are podcasts only available through podcast distributors online, such as iHeart, iTunes, Stitcher, and handfuls of other resources? Or do I access podcasts just through apps on my phone or tablet? The answer, I think, is yes. Well, wait, what is a podcast really? Is it just a talk show posted digitally? Does it include video? Is it a vodcast? Audio blogging? Recycled radio? A new broadcast format? Well, yes, no, maybe. I could regale you with the origins of early audio casts in the 1980s, but I won't. Email me for links on the history of podcasting if you're interested, and we're good. In the 2019 Vulture article, How Podcasts Learned to Speak, the once useless seeming medium that became essential, author Adam Sternberg noted, the portmanteau podcast, a mashup of iPod and broadcast, coined by the journalist Ben Hammersley in The Guardian in 2004, suggests that podcasts rode in on the coattails of the digital music revolution. You may remember the advent in 2001 of the Apple iPod, which made music portable. You may also remember such controversial websites as Napster, where mostly popular music was uploaded to be downloaded by millions without a clear regard for copyright. Always a nightmare for librarians. These two moments in recent history contributed to the rise of podcasting. So our access to portable entertainment expanded with the iPod and grew into tablets like the iPad and then into our smartphones with dozens of apps and podcasts after somewhat of a sluggish start, began to take off. The nice thing about podcasts is, well, they're a fairly democratic medium. Anyone with basic equipment can make and broadcast, um, uh, post, um, uh, upload one or a series. 
Like the lucrative rush of mommy blogging in the early aughts, email me, I'll explain. Women flocked to podcasting, inching up in yet another male-dominated entertainment field, not only by tackling some typical domestic topics such as parenting and planning family meals, but women also jumped in at the deeper end with sports, news, health, right out there relationship and sex conversations, comedy, and the true draw in podcast series, true crime. Enter Serial, the breakthrough podcast hosted by Sarah Koenig, launched by the popular radio series, This American Life in 2014. Serial explores a true crime event in depth over multiple episodes. What attracts listeners besides humanity's probably unhealthy obsession with murder mysteries is that they feel as if they are part of an ongoing narrative, not just listening to a staid news report. There are many genres covered in podcasts. serial fiction, reinventing golden age radio dramas, news, politics, hobbies, obsessions, advice to the lovelorn, fitness, food, fame, gaming, collecting, self-actualization, poetry. You knew I would mention that one, didn't you? And virtually anything anyone can think of that they want to explore. Any and all are presented or produced by women podcasters. See, we're getting there. As you might expect, with the rise in popularity of podcasts comes the attention of marketers and advertisers, not content to try to interrupt TV programming, commercial radio, magazines, and clutter up websites, target your supposed interests in social media. The wheels of commerce rolled into podcasting. The big podcast deal of 2020 was for the Joe Rogan experience, launched in 2015, and which netted a reputed $100 million three-year contract on Spotify. In Rogan's own words, the Joe Rogan experience began as a show sitting in front of laptops, bullshitting, and is now available to Spotify's 345 million active monthly users. Here are some listener statistics from recent years. It's still a white man's world, but women are inching forward. Women have a notable presence in broadcasting across the political, cultural, and social spectrum, although they comprise less than a third of mainstream media announcers as of 2016. Those of us who follow public media may be more familiar with popular female program hosts and reporters. A format in which women have made a positive showing but still in lower numbers than men is in podcasting. According to the 2018 Infinite Dial study, women are inching toward closing the gender listening gap, lagging behind men only by about 9%. The number of women listening to podcasts reflect the number of women actually producing podcasts and hosting shows. Currently, studies show that women only host 22% of podcasts, however. Some reasons for lower numbers of women include cost of high-end recording equipment and technical expertise with modern podcasting, Black, Indigenous, and people of color women interviewed in podcast business journal in 2019 expressed a sense of doubt and lack of confidence in becoming podcasters. A promising sign is that Google and Spotify major podcast distributors, have programs to support underrepresented voices in podcasting. Before I inundate you with a selection of women-driven podcasts to check out, 
Let me alert you to the sometimes transitory nature of podcasts. Some pod podcasts are created with a set number of episodes in mind. Let's think of those like a PBS mini, mini series. Others have been running daily or weekly for years, serial, for example. Still others have started, gone on hiatus, switched hosts or producers, or both, and resumed. And then there are lingering podcasts from a few years ago that showed promise and ran out of steam for various reasons. Let's take a look at some guides to po podcasting and podcasts, especially useful for a newbie like me. Beginner's Guide to Finding and Listening to Podcasts, How to Listen to Podcasts, A Guide for Absolute Beginners, and The Beginner's Guide to Podcasts. I will make sure that you have all the links that I've included in this PowerPoint and in this service if you're interested. Here are some selected podcast directories. 20 best podcast directory for busy people, sounds hopeful, an A to Z podcast directory, and an updated list from uh, RSS feed, the complete podcast directory list for 2021. Let's look at a selection of podcasts for and by women. Fill in cultured gaps in just five minutes a day by listening to Encyclopedia Womanica, presented by Jenny and Liz Kaplan. No matter where they are, do you always rely on your BFF? Listen to Anne Friedman and Amanitu Sao on Call Your Girlfriend. Want to explore parenthood in all its forms? Keep up to date with Hilary Frank on the longest, shortest time. Disabled activist Alice Wong brings own voices to her podcast, Disability Visibility. Anna Sale explores the hard choices that are often left out of polite conversation in death, sex, and money. Descent Magazine's podcast, Belabored, hosted by Sarah Jaffe and Michelle Chen, covers the politics of work and culture. Understand more about mental health through pop culture references presented by psychiatrist Dr. Imani Walker in Imani State of Mind. Interested in learning about horticultural how-to and woo-woo? Tune into A Way to Garden with Margaret Roach. What does it mean to be human? How do we want to live and be with each other? Follow Krista Tippett in On Being for more insights. From our neighbors to the north, science for the people, learn more about scientific issues in this long interview format, Canadian podcast. Note to self with Manush Zomorodi dives into the essential quandaries facing anyone trying to preserve their humanity in the digital age. Join comedians and best friends Kate Berlant and Jacqueline Novak on POOG as they plumb the oddities of the trillion dollar wellness industry. Listen and learn from Annie and Samantha about stuff mom never told you. Alice, Eli, Irene, and Jason share hosting Queer as Fact, a history podcast covering content from around the world and throughout time based out of Melbourne, Australia. In our body politic, Farai Chidea reports on how women of color experience and impact political issues today. History Chicks introduces listeners to female characters in history, factual or fictional, 
with Beckett Graham and Susan Vollenweider. Are you looking for more true crime podcasts, but with a humorous twist? Check out my favorite murder hosted by Karen Kilgareth and Georgia Hardstark. In Spinsters, Haley O'Shaughnessy and Jordan Liggins put a spin on the NBA with conversations, interviews, and original storytelling. So many podcasts, so little time. If you're a fan of best of lists, take a look at these. A few of the best of podcasts lists for and by women. Again, I'm happy to provide these links in case you want to follow up on this list of best of podcasts. So now that you know where to find podcasts for and by women, would you take a moment in the Zoom chat to let me know your favorite podcasts? Thank you for listening and learning alongside me today. Happy Easter, happy spring, happy Passover, happy podcasts. Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne, for sharing your thoughts today. That was a very informative talk. If you have questions about Unitarian Universalism or about joining this congregation, please contact our board president, Richard Thornton. His email is Laken Heath, L-A-K-E-N-H-E-A-T-H 64 at gmail.com. If you'd like to receive our weekly email updates or our monthly newsletter, please type your email address into the chat box or email us at office at uubgky.org. Our community is strengthened by sharing our resources. This place and the work we do is supported by the voluntary generosity of all who contribute. The offering is a sacrament of the free church. The offering will now be given and received in grateful appreciation of our shared hopes and values. While we listen to the offertory music, we invite you to go to the website shown on the screen and donate there or write a check and prepare it for mailing. Just my
we thank you for your generous gifts. May we use them wisely in the service of our congregation and our community. Our next musical selection will be Meditation on Breathing. Our closing words are by Madeline L'Engle. Part of doing something is listening. We are listening to the sun, to the stars, to the wind. As our gathering ends, we will extinguish the flame in our chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts wherever we go. Go in peace, go in service to others, go in love.